So what I want to talk today about is this, so you can check this, it's in, in a language that you cannot understand, but I will try to explain a little bit. Yeah? So what, what you've seen in the previous talk was kind of in general how I think one should approach thinking and designing and playing with Meteora. Now I want to discuss about how I do it yeah, in, in my life. So we have two, two characters that you actually will be working with Alice. Yeah? And I, today I want to talk now about Sol. Yeah, Sol is the Sol is the son of Alice. Yeah? So they are both kind of fictional characters. They are both kind of uh, um, playing in the direction of what we want Takeshi to become in a way. So they are fictional character of a kind of, let's say, a probabilistic alphabet. So coding Sol. What does that mean? We can look at it from the notion of an active coding and a passive coding. If we think about it in an active way, then it's soul that codes. And if we look at it from the passive perspective, it's soul that's being coded. And soul comes from a collaboration between Silvio Vujicic and me. Yeah? So two of us. What Silvio, let me just show you Silvio. So it's this guy here. So he's a good friend and a colleague. We collaborate now for around five, six years. He's a, a kind of renowned fashion designer in, in Croatia, and he's also a renowned artist there. So we started our kind of collaboration, and then what he gave us he gave the, the brand. Huh? So he gave all of his data, everything he ever did. And Alice contributed with her, with her algorithms. Yeah? If you are interested in Sol, you can, you can watch a movie about Sol. This is the movie. In abundance, we live in, in decadence. We live in, in a world that seems to be constructing problems rather than having them. Different personas from well, different yeah, brands, see, it's kind of like older, Alice, older usual Miro Roman, Silvio Vujicic, AI1, one, one is the... I don't the know, guy, huh? it's a lot. He took a lot, I gave him a lot, he developed a lot. Yes, but Sol takes all the collections and all the, all the data I gave him, but he transforms it. He doesn't copy it. He doesn't reinterpret it. He develops it into something else. It's also data that he pollutes, I mean, with other materials, with other topics, but also Sol works in a specific context. So I would say he just has a library. So this is around Sol. You can watch the whole movie, how to how to construct a, a persona. Yeah? Just the idea of a face, so not the construction of it. It's again the uh, the same games. Huh? It's always the same games. With Alice, is is kind of similar for me. Alice is a kind of an experiment for for research and these kind of things, and Sol is a kind of rendering it towards a, towards a certain reality. Yeah? So Sol doesn't design. Sol writes fashion. Sol is actually a, a kind of an artificially intelligent fashion designer. He has his kind of stuff. You can buy them in, in a shop. We are setting this up as we speak. He has his own kind of search engine with all the libraries, stories, and so on. He has a kind of a planet. This is the, the planet Sol in which you have kind of all this kind of stuff that came from uh, uh, Silvio's brand. And then this is mixed with uh, generated stuff and so on. So it's a kind of a funny funny planet. We've also built like uh, a temple, a pavilion for him, where he is able to, to sell his, uh, his kind of clothes and this kind of, this kind of thing. So take a look a little bit around Seoul. What, what happened to us was a kind of a funny, a funny strange moment. Yeah? So we were asked uh, in Croatia by something which is 
I don't know if you know this this thing, Brigitte magazine. So I, I'm not sure which one is in Switzerland, but I think you should be able to to relate. You know this Brigitte? Nobody knows, you know? Yeah. It's a kind of a female, uh, um, it's a magazine for middle-aged women, yeah? Like some, something like this, you know? <laughs> <laughs> kind of lifestyle magazine for middle-aged women. It's yellow press, it's kind of com complete strange magazine, a little bit uh, uh, trashy, you yeah? So a lot of people would directly run away from from this thing and say, kind of, we don't care. Let's not uh, uh, let's not do it. And we were like, okay, that's interesting. Huh? Like, what do we do with this? And we said, okay, let's do the magazine, but we'll ask them if we can have a kind of a carte blanche on content. So we want to be free on the level of content to do whatever we want. And if they agree with this, then we just go for it and we do it. And this happened. The whole project happened in two months, yeah, basically. We proposed a certain topic, they accepted it, we made a contract, bam, in two months, let's do it. What for me was extremely interesting is that somehow, you know, one could say everything was wrong about this magazine. Yeah? So it's kind of the wrong ad audience in the wrong country, in the wrong language. So it's kind of, you know, like, why would you do it? But on the other hand, what's super nice is that you enter into a kind of very specific um, place. Yeah, You enter into the waiting rooms of dentists, you enter into the plastic surgery places, you start talking to a certain audience that you would never talk to. Yeah? Like it's a, it's a funny place to be. So we said, okay, let's do it. And then they actually kind of were very cool and it went very nice. I'm very happy with this collaboration. So we really had a carte blanche. We were able to do whatever we wanted to do. Yeah? So in principle, uh, uh, this thing, this is the Croatian version of, of, you can see that it kind of looks, looks the same. Sometimes it wants to be kind of more sexy, more trashy. Sometimes it wants to be, I don't know, more arty, more kind of smart, but it's, it's these kind of games they play. And we said, okay, great, let's let's go for it. Inside these things look like this. Yeah? So it's kind of, you have stories for kind of famous people from a particular region and they tell their, their kind of stuff. Okay, great. First, what we did is we said, okay, let's, uh, uh, let's take everything. So this, this is another thing which is kind of cool is that you can take... Uh, um, you can take a page from it and you just put it into Google Translate with the image and it translates into English and it kind of keeps the layout. So the, the vibe of the thing stays the same. It just kind of changes the, the, the language a little bit. Yeah? So we took, we told them, okay, guys, give us everything you have. Yeah? Like give us the whole archive of, of things that you have. And they gave us, they had uh, a kind of a 50, 50 magazines yeah, that they gave us. And we said, okay, let's look what's happening there. So it's 14 years of storybook, 51 issue there, 108,734 objects, three and a half million written words, and 164,750 sentences. For instance, these are all the oranges that come from these magazines, and these are kind of the faces that, uh, uh, that come from it. Yeah? How do we uh, uh, look at these things? We look at them through probabilities and we say, okay, Saul says your data are my food and everything I want is a new storybook. What we were kind of looking in the layout is to, to have the ability to, to read it as a comic book as well. Yeah? So you have text, but then you always have these kind of strong titles and you can actually scan, uh, run through the magazine and read it as, um, as a comic book. Yeah? These are, for instance, all the found objects that we found. Yeah? So we found 60,429 persons, 6,664 chairs, 3,403 ties, 3,003 bottles, and so on. These are kind of samples of bottles, and these are samples of different bowls that they have. And it's a kind of a nice way to engage with a certain format with a certain uh, environment you enter. You just kind of scan and look what's there. Then we made, of course, a dictionary of the most frequent words, and then this is more, when, year, book, can, according, and so on. Yeah? You kind of get a feeling of what's happening there. Then we were looking as well for faces. What are faces? We found 
that in the magazine you had 6,687 women, 5,753 men, 1,320 of them were happy, 2,445 were sad, and 868 uh, were angry. And all of them, they make the cover of the storybook. Yeah? So the cover of the, of the storybook is actually a face which is generated and done in a linear drawing, and it's printed on a glossy paper. So when you take the, the magazine, what you see is a reflection of yourself inside of the cover, and you become a part of the storybook cover as well. Yeah? And here, what, what you can see, these are all the faces that we took from the, from the magazine. They're on the left side. And on the right side, there are all the mutants that we created with, the, with kind of training on top of them. And one of these mutants, or one of the faces that comes from the genetic code of this magazine, creates the cover in which your face reflects as well. So how do you how do you do this kind of uh, uh, how do you do this kind of things? Yeah? So let's take a. Um, Let's take a kind of an article that we have. This is something that, that we did. An article, and let's look at it from the perspective of how Saul looked at all the, all the articles. Yeah? So we kind of take the, this thing, and we want to extract the text and the images in order to, to see what's going on there. Yeah? This is the process how, how we kind of do it. Uh, the images that it takes out of the out of the, the article. What's nice, it even can remove the text, yeah? So if it's a kind of a PDF, it even removes the, it removes the text, leaves the, the images, and it extracts, it extracts the text separately. And then you can do kind of analysis and you can start looking at these things, yeah? And then if we start looking at the, if we start looking at the images, for instance, this image soul starts to look at it in it. so he detects the face, he detects uh, the the lady, and this is Nika. Nika was helping us a lot on the on the magazine. She was kind of working on the magazine, being the model, and uh, uh, helping us to create the clothes as well. Yeah? And if we look at now what it sees with uh, uh, with Nika here, these are the dominant colors on the on the image. This is the content. So this is a kind of a person. He is a little bit confused with the with the ear. There are certain probabilities how he is able to see this, and then he kind of always mirrors and starts experimenting immediately with what's going on. Or, for instance, with this kind of uh, uh, guys here, he sees them like this. These are these are commercials which are part of the of the magazine. Yeah, so this is how Saul deals with them. It's again the the same game, yeah? and this is what what is in the what is in the image. Yeah? So we did this on everything, on all the, on all the things. Yeah? And this is the, the article, which is called Open Your Mouth. And these mouths were a kind of a topic which was passing through, through the whole magazine. So this was a one of the leitmotifs. So Saul loves mouths and collects them through the internet, big and small, full and thin, closed and open, make up and pierced with silicone implants or with Botox, wet or dry, a mouth that chews and numbers gossips licks a lollipop and lollipop or chews a chewing gum the mouth that kisses and the mouth that vomits mouths also talk and soul loves language the mouth sometimes breathes soul third turned mouths into buttons and so on and the whole jacket and the makeup all of this is a kind of a, a part of of this kind of uh, story these are the jackets that we designed we also printed the we also printed the shoes and played with, uh, with all of these, these kind of things. Yeah? And then somehow the AI was always present. So even with the, with the faces, we kind of imagine, so you, you design the clothes, you take the photos, and then you just kind of a little bit shamelessly put a text on top of everything and kind of take an AI and even change the, the face. Yeah? So we were playing with, we had the, the black jacket, the pink jacket, so this was a part of the editorial. This is a kind of a process where you do all the all the films, you kind of print it. It's for, for expansion of, of different fabrics. 
So you always play with these kind of old school technologies, and then you play with the, with the new school technologies. Kind of bring all of these things, uh, uh, these things together. Huh? And these mouths come again from scanning of, of, of different places. Yeah? And then these mouths, of course, you, you play with them. What's nice is to always bring them to, to different kind of realities, to, to play with them. Yeah? So, of course, you have the QR codes that you can scan and then you become a part of, of this makeup. So we were kind of always playing and trying to, to bring these things towards the, the different <laughs> realities. Yeah? Somehow to to make it funny. Yeah, of course, in the process, you do a little bit of printing, a little bit of scanning. You ask yourself where these mouths are coming, where can you put them, what they are about. And I think mouth is a kind of a funny object to play with if you are interested with fashion. Huh? It's, a, it's, it's light, there is a lot of things coming in, coming out from mouths, you talk, yeah. it's a little bit uh, uh, sexual. So there are all of these games. And then these kind of things start to appear. So we had <laughs> different types of pages. Yeah? So you have the pages that we control. These are the pages on the left. Then you have the type of pages where you don't control. These are the ones on the right. They are commercials. They bring these funny creatures inside and they almost start feeling like when you're watching YouTube. Yeah? You, you are watching something that you want and then suddenly something is coming out for 20 seconds. You have to bear with it and then you go further. But what this format, I think, gives you is the ability to to kind of play with different formats. Huh? So it's not really a lifestyle thing that we did. It's not really uh, an academic thing that we did. And it's not really a, an art magazine what we did. We tried kind of to combine all these different worlds into this thing and make something that we were kind of happy, that we were kind of happy about. And these mouths, they come from different places. So in another project that we did before, we scanned this C32 magazine from Fashion and we kind of took out all the mouths. And somehow later when you do the back archaeology, this mouth comes from Virgil Abloh, yeah? like by chance. The same mouth we took because there, there are actually three types of, of pages in the, in the magazine, but the mouths went through. So we collected then all the mouths from all the magazine that they ever did and use them as a kind of a background for, for certain commercials. Yeah? So then you have all the variations of these mouths, how you can have them. Well, they're kind of cool. I like it. It's very fleshy how this looks like. And you have a kind of a code that says, OK, this was a person with the probability of 0 0.88. Yeah? And this was a person with the probability. And you get a feeling of what kind of mouths live in this, uh, in this kind of magazine. Yeah? So these, th there are three types of pages. This is the commercial, we have no control. Then we have the one with the content, which is under our control. And then you have these kind of funny pages where people who pay for commercials, they have an ability to show certain objects. And then we started playing with this a little bit. So they have to put it on our mouths. And we are able to always uh, uh, integrate one thing to disturb their commercials. Yeah? For instance, this is an action figure of an absent father. Yeah? And there is a small girl looking for the father who is absent. And it's not even included in the, in the box. It's a little bit kind of dark humor. But, <laughs> <laughs> but these kind of things, when you, when you do these things, you kind of have different emotions and you, you play with this. Yeah? So the topic, the, the topic of the magazine, what we want, so you have to have something that can resonate with people. Everyone likes recycling, yeah? So we do recycling, okay? We do recycling and soul is AI, so AI and recycling. So this should somehow work with the format of, of this type of a magazine. But then we say, okay, great, let's do recycling. But let's think what is recycling if it's not recycling of waste. So it, this storybook presents a collection of stories about recycling. They encourage us to think about the world outside the usual framework of resources and waste, good and bad, artificial and natural. It's a world where everything circulates endlessly, objects, ideas, thoughts, and emotions. As the editor of this storybook, I, as a collection of different intelligences, artificial and natural, large and small intelligences of planets and objects, want to op open the topic of cycles. I'm interested in the way in which objects move and live in endless cycles. I want to talk about recycling in the broadest sense. So how to think of recycling beyond this, uh, uh, beyond this good and bad. So what does it mean for objects to, to live in cycles? Huh? 
So Saul says, I don't design, I write Hesher. Huh? He plays with your, these things. Huh? Your image is my wave and all I want is a racing coat. Huh? So she has a kind of um, a specific kind of makeup, specific things, how she's dressed and so on. And then we again play with, with these things. Huh? About this coat, you can watch in the, in the movie. So Saul, uh, and now you can see, for instance, Grimes is using the same makeup as uh, as Nina, Nina uh, as in the in the magazine, yeah? as Nika was using in the in the magazine. So you can play with these things. I love it. We also made coins. And Saul says, yeah, I use everything available to me from all the domains. Tabula rasa doesn't exist for me. I combine all data with new, the latest 3D print with unpopular printing technologies, text and woven textile. Mid journey and photos I downloaded from other authors. I use guns and songs, large databases and short conversations, transcripts and generated text, chat GPT and DALI. I read Plato's text and memoirs of Andy Warhol. I write text and algorithms. Algorithms give me speed and ability to work with millions of objects at once. In pictures, I read text and so on, blah, 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 yeah? playing around. And then we had 20 or 30 articles where we go through different stories on what recycling might be. And we invite people that we kind of like, and this is always kind of polluted with these things, but I kind of like the the disturbance that, that happens with these kind of commercials. They put a very, I think, a kind of a, a vibe of, of a certain zeitgeist in it. Yeah? So, for instance, this is a guy who is collecting uh, purses. Yeah? So he, he lives in London, he collects purses, this is his fetish, and he makes a kind of an interesting statement how, for instance, a whole posture of a man kind of falls apart when he enters, I don't know, a shopping mall with a purse. Or for instance, a couple enters and then the girl gives the guy the, the bag and it, it's a kind of a collapse of a certain masculinity and so on. So this is about politics, political correctness, luxury, queer, handbags, copying, fashion, cartoons, fetishes, extremes, Chanel, Prada and so on. And he's a kind of a guy who, who talks about fashion. Then he sent us his collection of, uh, of of his bags but the problem was that he kind of took photos of his bags you know on, on the bed and on the bed you always have fabric and the, when the fabric is a little not kind of proper then it's a problem how do you take the take the bags out and then you go on internet you find kind of funny apps and this is kind of a nice ai app that you can put 100 photos in and for instance it removes all the all the backgrounds so this was like we were like, so we didn't know what to do. You know, you get 100 pictures. What are you going to tell the guy? Like, can you take another 100, please? And put it on a white or a kind of a clean background? Or you kind of have to now work with these things. Yeah? So we, we did that. And then, of course, once we got all the bags, Saul had to take those bags and kind of create a new bag for him. So this is a bag created... Uh, uh, for Dino, and it was produced for by an AI model trained on all the the bags that Dino uh, the Dino had. Yeah? And of course, again, this bag then goes from the physical object towards the uh, the pictures, and then it, it enters the screen, and then it kind of a little bit exits the screen, and, and kind of it lives in in funny places. Yeah. And this we gave to Dino as um, as a present, yeah. And these things, so I know how to do it by hand properly. We train the faces like in hard way, but then you have this kind of runway ML or whatever this is, and you just put the bags in and say train on this, and in half an hour you have it back. And each one of these apps costs ten euros, so you pay ten euros for one month, and then you just cancel it, and it just works super super nice. Then we had an interview with, uh, with this funny guy. He's uh, uh, actually um, working here in one institute in, in Zurich. He's a, a biologist and he works with cell cultures. Yeah, this, uh, I found this super nice. So to discuss 
What does it mean to recycle food? To put food in different cycles. What is the how to how to think of food? Yeah, when cell cultures and sunlight share a plate, or for instance, waste is a byproduct of industrialization. So there was no waste before we had industrialization. So how to think of of all of all of these things? And we discuss a kind of a future of food, future of, of for instance, meat, cell cultured food, and all these kind of uh, things. Yeah? And then there was a kind of this, you have this kind of funny moments. Uh, at one moment, he said, okay, let's imagine people live from solar energy similar to photosynthesis. And if you are familiar now with what's happening with these CRISPR technologies and gene editing and so on, it's a kind of a funny thought to think. Imagine if when, and I don't think this will be so impossible because the way how the, the cells so, for instance, how, how the certain uh, evolutionary steps of it can happen is that, anyway, the, the idea is that you can change the, the genes in a way that you can have photosynthesis in your cell. Yeah? That's a, that would be kind of a funny, funny thing to, to, to happen. Yeah? Plants without roots, mocus mold is the fifth element. Chinese textures, European flavors, and personalized nutritional cocktails, all of these kind of uh, uh, funny things were discussed with him. So there is a kind of a cell cultured chocolate as well. This was done by one of the colleagues that studied, uh, uh, that did a PhD here as well. We kind of ate the, this chocolate that came from, from uh, uh, cell cultured cocoa. These are, these are kind of funny. I think there is a lot of interesting topics around cell cultured stuff. Then we had an interesting interview with a photographer where we wanted to discuss about what is authorship, yeah? kind of play the game of authorship and, and see how does one recycle or approach the notion of authorship today. And we asked her, and she's kind of famous in Croatia, famous uh, fashion photographer to, to make a kind of a funny conversation with her. Yeah? This didn't work out at all. She didn't like anything we did. She gave us photos. Yeah, and then we saw likes this kind of mirroring of, of stuff. So we mirrored all her photos and uh, uh, we've sent her back those photos. Kind of, we were kind of happy how this looks like, but she was uh, very repulsed with these things. But it's fine, huh? it's not, for me, it's not a problem. So imagine like, and then we did an interview with her and it was kind of a little bit tricky. So Sol says, I'm sending you the variations I established with your photographs. What's your first impression? My first impression is a mess. More often than not, I feel uncomfortable when I see the manipulation of my photos. What do you think, who do you think is the author of these pictures? And she says, I feel as if someone has torn off parts of me and threw them on new pictures. So this was a kind of a vibe that we got back from uh, from her. But I think what's nice here is when you do these kind of things is not to run away from this, but kind of incorporate the energy, even though this energy is not maybe going in your direction, but you get the kind of uh, a momentum there. And I think then it can be felt later in, in what's happening with the, with the magazine. Yeah? Then what we wanted to do at one moment is to, so we wanted to also include kind of some criminals in the magazine and we wanted to include people who know how to wear their bodies well. Yeah? And we had a little bit of problems because it was two months to, to find proper people like that. So then we found um, a, a random hockey club. So in Croatia, there is no hockey. This doesn't in principle exist. There are only a few uh, only a few clubs and this is one of them and we asked them if we can take uh, uh, photos of them dressed in kind of soul stuff yeah? so then we made almost like porcelain figures and this is a kind of a meteoric uh, moment you can see the the, uh, the temples and the columns behind of them and they are in, in in ice and these guys are like porcelain figures that soul collected because he likes these kind of things yeah? And what we, this was a kind of the leitmotiv for this was these tympanons of the temples or the, the sarcophagus of, uh, of Roman and Greek, uh, um, these uh, uh, boxes for bodies. They are always full of bodies which, inter, which intertwine and, um, and interweave each other. Yeah? 
Uh, and this is kind of uh, a game to to do this. But what we basically did is we scanned 17 people yeah, and made 3D models of them and then kind of rendered them. And, and it looks like we did uh, real porcelain figures, but no, they, they are all modeled. Yeah? So we kind of modeled the whole team. What's funny is that we have in, in this uh, uh, magazine, so in, in Croatia you have kind of the north and the south, and then you have the two football clubs that hate each other and they kind of fight in between themselves. We were able to have commercials for both of them in the <laughs> magazine. <laughs> and we were kind of very happy about it. <laughs> then we, we were discussing with, um, with, this is a kind of a professor from History of Art in, in Zagreb, and she we, we asked her, can you... Can you write an article about who is dressing the gods? So during, so you know, gods are always dressed somehow. Who is their fashion designer? Who is dressing the gods, and and, and why are they dressed in certain ways? How to talk about virtuality? What is virtuality? How does virtuality come and go away? Because these gods kind of appear all the time, and they're always dressed a little bit different. Yeah? So th there is also this kind of moment of uh, alienation. And then she made an article in, 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 in this direction, not exactly like this, of course. She said, okay, the, the first task in life and the journey through the history of, of avatars. Yeah? And she gave us like three images to, to work with. Yeah? So this is one of those images. This is another Roman uh, uh, sculpture. And and this sculpture as well. Yeah? So this is Tiepolo, I think, yeah, it's Tiepolo, Juno, and the Roman goddess of the moon. Yeah? And then we said, okay, we need to alienate. So how to, how to approach these images in a way that we alienate them so that we kind of a little bit create a certain tension in, in this article. Yeah? So then we, uh, uh, then what Saul, um, Saul said, okay, let's, tattoo those images on people and let's make the magazine pay for, for these things. So we kind of uh, uh, paid uh, uh, Donadini Inc. Uh, tattoo salon to advertise free tattoos for the people who will get those tattoos and will kind of just come into the space and, you know, take pictures in a, in a random way and just pose them, pose them there. So then these images were actually embedded in the people, yeah? So then the question is, when you have this image, who is the author of this image? Is, is it Tiepolo? Is it the artist? Is it the body that wears it? Or is the soul who order, huh? Tattoo ordered by soul. And it's tattooed on Tony Shimunovic, yeah? I'm very happy with, uh, with how this turned out and how you have this kind of a funny alienated moment and again, translation on translation on translation, alienation on alienation and so on. So you enter in a very funny, in a very funny space. And I think for us, what was also important is that these different articles have a different sense of laying, uh, of layout. Yeah, some are extremely disturbing in the way how they are layouted. Some are layouted as kind of academic articles. So for each article, we created a specific atmosphere and we played with, with uh, specific things. And I think with, uh, with Oscar Wilde and with uh, um, Mary Shelley and with Virginia Woolf, all of these guys, yes, they are Enlightenment people, but they are, I think, the first quantum people. Yeah? So I, I love this kind of quotes. The first task in life is, not, is to be as artificial as possible. No one has yet discovered the second task. These kind of things are, for me, beautiful. Yeah, or for instance, then this guy comes here, and then, of course, it becomes a, a mask for the face that you can play with on uh, on Instagram. We kind of like Instagram. I think it's, for us, It's it doesn't matter in principle if it's Instagram or whatever, but what we like is just this translation from media to media from a certain domain of reality to another one, yeah? and just to, to play with this. Kulturfolger, it's the most famous art gallery in, in Zurich. If you haven't been, I think you should uh, check it out. So it's um, it's discussing, again, it's the topic of mouth. Yeah. So now it's food, not food on the level of engineering and cell cultures, but now it's food in a sense of a certain theater of food. Yeah? So if you go to a fancy restaurant, what you are paying is not the food, 
you are paying for a certain setup and you are paying for the way how it's delivered and so on. And this should be actually not language on language, but it should be tongue on tongue, yeah? like tongue in the sense of uh, this and then tongue in the sense of language. Yeah? So tongue on tongue, some, some, it's a little bit difficult to, to translate. And what these guys do, they approach the, the topic of food through, again, multi multimedia setup. We have on, on my YouTube, you can find the talk from Kultur Folger about how they do it and what these things are about. Check the, check the gallery. Yeah? So they do all of these things, it's custom made and everything is set up in order to, to kind of play the games. You can play with food in an interesting way. And then again, this kind of, you have the cups and the cups are flying and they're in the magazine, out of the magazine, on the table, off the table. Yeah, play, play around with, uh, with these things. I think this stuff with uh, food is super, super interesting and beautiful to play. Check, uh, uh, check Kultur Folger. Then there is this familiar person, Adil. He had uh, 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 an article and this was about recycling but in an architectural manner yeah so how to to play this kind of i will talk about <laughs> this is an interpretation yeah like how to how to play with scenograph scenographies and what is architecture if we look at it from the perspective of of the plenty yeah so here you have this kind of references that adil will i'm sure talk about and then it's funny to see because these guys I wrote the uh, text in English, then we had to translate them to Croatian, and then again from Croatian I'm translating them to English, and this then this becomes very funny how uh, how much discrepancy there is. Yeah, like I don't know exactly now what was uh, that Adil wrote, and again AI is implicitly present on all the levels of uh, of the of the magazine. Yeah, so these are again mid journey images that Adil was uh, playing with, and then we put them yeah, in. This was around the dance, dancing, uh, kind of a, a nice dancer, the tall and the short, the fat and the skinny, the beautiful and the ugly, everyone is dancing today. And he talks about his kind of uh, dancing career. This was very interesting. Um, these images were done by actually an ex-student of Meteora, Louis. I gave him, we asked Mia, Mia is like, uh, a famous uh, uh, public person in, in, in Croatia, yeah, and then, very smart uh, lady. It was really a pleasure to to talk to her, how she was playing. So she gave us her whole Instagram feed and then we just put it in, in the city. And then, uh, yeah, so this... Uh, um, how, how do you call the place where Nicola got married? In, in, this is not Gemeinde, but like... Zundhaus. Zundhaus, yeah? Zund. This kind of uh, a craftsman place, yeah? Guild, guild. guild, a guild, yeah. And then in uh, in Croatian language, the guild, its etymology is with the cycle, yeah. So it's, it's kind of the word guild means cycle, and then it's nice because then the title of the of the article is Cycle Mia, yeah. But it means actually a guild because the the firm that she opened is called uh, a guild. And then we talk about how she is able to to play all her different characters as a public and media exposed persona. What do you? say what you don't say, how you move through the media and so on. And then this was super funny to get this uh, uh, Not Vital guy into this magazine. Yeah? This was kind of uh, very tricky to, to explain to him, like, you know, can you do an interview for a trash magazine for kind of middle-aged women in Croatia and it's going to be in Croatian language? But what's cool with this kind of people is that they, they sense that it's okay, yeah? that it's nice. So it's kind of, you have to approach it in a very uh, 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 careful manner so that they don't feel tricked and they don't feel that it's going to be something stupid. And then if they buy it, uh, and he, I think he likes these kind of things. And then we got this picture on uh, this fantastic here riding on Jota in Swiss Alps. <laughs> <laughs> like we had the two and this is his uh, uh, atelier. And then a bicycle contains a cycle and, and so on. So we kind of had nice, uh, uh, nice conversations with him. Nature recycled my dream, not egoistic, but egocentric. So I don't want a kitchen. I once tried to live in a sculpture. Sounds impossible, right? He, he's kind of, he gave a last semester a talk, talk in Meteora. 
stealing someone's time is the worst possible thing. So he bought this island somewhere in uh, in Amazona and then he carved it and it's a, ma a marble island. Yeah? This is the entrance to the island. I don't hire or I don't fire. And then he married his horse inside of the church. These are, this is now in, in one village in Switzerland, in Sus, Su, 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 I don't know, something like this. And it's actually owned by a Polish lady that owns half of Poland. And then they have like uh, this thing there. It's a funny, funny setup. Yeah? So this was with not Vital. Then just to, uh, so what we didn't, so si since we don't do magazines, uh, like we didn't know that if you do an interview that actually there is so much work. So if you ask Jorge and Adel to write text, it's fantastic. They give you text, you translate them and you have them. But once you have an interview, it's like two hours of talking and then you have to transcribe it and then you have to work with, with this. But then AI again, kicks in in a, in a beautiful way. So for instance, with uh, OpenAI again, there is this whisper thing. So it's, um, it's a transcribing machine. And this machine works in all the, in all the languages. Yeah? So you take the Zoom recording, put it there, you get the text. You get the text out. And this is, the, this is how, in principle, the text, let me do this. This is how the text looks like. Yeah, so first you start, uh, this is this magazine in Croatia. It's a kind of thing where Meghan Markle chooses the color of her bedroom, blah, blah, blah. Yeah? And then you, you get it kind of unedited. But what's, what comes then super handy is uh, ChatGPT. Huh? You can connect ChatGPT to Mathematica. So let's connect it. Let's ask him if it's there. Are you ready to do some proof editing? Sure, go ahead. Okay, let's do it. The text is here. Then we cut the text into different parts. parts. And you can ask it, for instance, this is a transcript of an interview in English that needs to be converted into an interview format for print. Can you proofread it and put it in the form of a dialogue between two characters? Saul asks questions and the person named Not Vital answers. When Miro or Silvio appear, replace them with Saul. Silvio and Miro are Saul. Make sure to write in a grammatically correct English. Keep the conversational spirit of the text. But also, uh, this is a transcript of a part of the interview in English that needs to be summarized in one sentence. Not, don't mention the characters, but only the topics. Give me just 10 keywords separated by commas, nothing else. Give me a title for a part of the text, just the title, nothing else. Give me the most interesting sentence for a banner, just that, nothing else. Give me the keywords and so on. And you kind of start with, uh, uh, with this uh, uh, audio recording. You get the transcript like this. And then you get a kind of a text which has, you know, so, not without, so, not without, so, not without, and so on. Yeah, and th this is the Pantheon story. Huh? Think about the old buildings. The Pantheon comes to mind, blah, blah, blah. So you get this, and then you say, okay, what's the synopsis? What's the title? What are the keywords? Pantheon, God, Recycle, Humans, Building, Change, Control, Castle. Give me the banner. Very seldom do I approach things in a conventional way. Yeah? So after the interview in three hours, you have a kind of a body of text you can work with. I found this uh, very, very exciting. I mean, we died with these interviews. <laughs> then we had uh, uh, another text also from another, this is a professor of um, in a textile university in Zagreb and we asked her, okay, Let's take the, uh, the, the famous jewel, the most famous pearl, yeah? and let's see how this most famous pearl was recycling people. So how do jewels recycle people? And she wrote a nice text about it. La Pellegrina in a jewel captures sea pearl that wit and the witness of times. Yeah? And then she gave us also uh, images where this pearl is present. And, and I, I really like how then the layout of this article looks like. So we have all the famous queens that were wearing these pearls. And you always organize the text in a way that you have the look of the queen, you have the pearl, 
and then the rest of it is uh, is a kind of the the text yeah? and in between these two images we have again pearls which are filled with the faces of those queens so you're reading the articles and you have this kind of funny looking sometimes beautiful sometimes less beautiful queens with the pearls huh? the pearl is here and then you're always looking for the pearl and looking at the queen and reading a little bit of the text and kind of thinking of what connects all of these people and it's the pearl yeah like it's how funny how they look and then in the end this pearl was of course bought and given to elizabeth taylor by i don't remember who no, richard barton yeah for thirty-seven thousand dollars but i think this was in the in the 60s and so on yeah? so you get a kind of a funny funny setup with uh, uh with these things then again a lot of uh, commercials this was a kind of a fashion editorial for one guy we were discussing in principle the the relationship between copies and faking in uh, in clothing yeah? then we had a beautiful article from from jorge cycles and bright light and this was funny jorge was uh, cre created a kind of a very moody article in which uh, um in which you have always uh, uh, Mark and Saul, and they are doing something together. Yeah, so they are dancing or they are moving, and they're always referring to to different movies. Yeah, and those images are done by Mid Journey, and then you can kind of guess which movie is this, and you can guess guess which movie is this. So here is with the uh, Pulp Fiction, and here is with Solaris or something like this. Yeah, the first one is Solaris. Yeah. And then I don't know. This is the with Jack Nicholson, the one in the hotel, probably. This is the the other part of the football game. This is from the south. The other one was from the north. Yeah, again, Saul and and Mark in the desert. The second. Uh, uh, fashion editorial that Saul did was about the dreams and here I think it gets interesting for you because uh, uh, so we said okay let's design some pajamas and how do we do it we start playing with the text yeah so, so if you are with uh, before I had Saul I ah, hear it is okay this is thing Saul yeah so if we go with Saul's library, so Saul has three libraries. Dream, we want to talk about the dreams. Let's find all the, all the sentences with dreams in Saul's library. Yeah? So Saul is around uh, uh, Stoker and then Homer and Oscar Wilde and Susan Zontag, Virginia Woolf. The pillow book by say and then these are kind of shakespeare these are the things that uh, uh so so like so let's take all the sentences from there and create a kind of a, a story around soul's first dream and then through this come to a some kind of uh, uh an idea for the pajamas and then just by combining these things you get a kind of a funny funny story around soul's pajamas I slept and God sent down a dream. It was like a dream, a dream I will never forget. I doubted everything, even my mind. But please, read this dream for me, won't you? There was a man, or was he all a dream? It all felt more dream than reality. I shall dream wild dreams. I felt like one in a dream. Life is a dream. So they are, my spirits, as in a dream, or are all bound up to dream better dreams. It's like a voice in a dream I cannot place. And it comforts me. What if you were unable to wake up from that dream? Many men dreamt of that. I had a bad dream, but I don't remember. No, the bitch wouldn't dream of it. The only difference is that you don't dream. Did you? Have you ever had a dream, Neo, that you were so sure was real? The bright shade of some immortal dream. Uh, so we kind of play play with these things. Yeah? And then you have a kind of uh, a pajamas with these kind of dreamy texts around on the pajamas, of the pajamas with a very funny um, uh, 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 kind of uh, uh, neon uh, colors that kind of glow in the, in, in the back. And this is how Saul sees the world through the eyes of the Count Dracula. Yeah? So if we are here, for instance, and then we have the stalker Dracula, what's happening here is that 
this is a, a galaxy of souls concepts. Yeah? This is how see, he sees the world. Then you have kind of different words and so on. This is the way how soul sees the world through his library. Yeah? And inside of this library, this is how soul thinks of Stoker and Dracula. Yeah, so this is in the galaxy when Stoker Dracula highlights certain parts. These are the concepts which are most important for, for Stoker the Dracula. Yeah? Throat, box, driver, vague, fear, motion, poor, key, silence, deer, horror, shell, a custom, and so on. Yeah? And then it's funny just to say these kind of uh, uh, statements. Huh? This is how I see the world through the eyes of the Count Dracula. Of course, nobody can get what are the games behind, but it doesn't matter because there are so many games, you get a kind of a vibe of, or a kind of a, an atmosphere of, uh, of what's going on there. Huh? This kind of funny pajamas that we were doing, like with funny cuts that you have to create. So all of these kind of things we did in uh, in two months, yeah. Like the the jackets, three jackets, one pajamas, and the whole magazine. We even did like a public opinion. This is again something super funny where you get uh, uh, Chat GPT to perform. Huh? We made a website. Or actually the magazine, this is where they helped us a lot. They set up a kind of a questionnaire online where we would ask questions. Yeah, What is recycling for you if it doesn't relate to waste? Do you think about recycling emotions? If so, how do you do it? And what is the position, your position on artificial intelligence? And then you just collect all the answers. You put it to JGPT and you tell him, okay, can you do an analysis by topics sentiment keywords and give a kind of a conclusion and you just put it in bam and in half an hour you have it there and in terms of the the text from this questionnaire we just took all the answers and just put them on one page yeah and then if it's recycling without the waste you have emojis of of this thing and then it's in green and if it's uh, uh yeah and then people say funny things yeah to, to this kind of, what do you think about recycling? I don't think about it, huh? like this kind of things. What, what's, what about recycling emotions? How do you do it? And then they give you kind of different uh, uh, answers to these things. And now it's instead of uh, uh, this recycling thing, now you have the, the hearts. And then what's your uh, attitude towards artificial intelligence? And then you have this kind of funny robots. So, she will get smarter with time and we will get dumber. Uh, that's one answer. <laughs> the other answer is I'm careful. Attitudes towards artificial in intelligence vary depending on the context, culture, profession, and many other factors. Is someone serious? Yeah? Fascination with innovation and so on. Yeah? So then again, here we even integrated a little bit of Michel Serre inside and these uh, uh, drug set guys uh, uh, sculptures to provoke them. We are the first, uh, 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 Sol is the first person who ever did an interview with David, with Michelangelo's David, but actually <laughs> it's, uh, um, this David is like uh, uh, all the Davids. Yeah? And the title of the article is Goliath never had a chance. And this is a kind of uh, a story <laughs> that David was so uh, good with, you know, his, <laughs> so it's almost like having a gun and then Goliath came, he just took a gun and shot him. Yeah? And then, and, and it's funny, huh? it's uh, what, what David actually did. It's a kind of a huge branding for, for the Medici. Yeah? So all this kind of <laughs> sculpture and so on, they're always positioned around the world as a kind of uh, a fight against the Medici who were at that moment very, very powerful and so on. So David is branding for, for Medici. And here we go from this David that was done by Michelangelo to the, the David, which was, uh, um, the, who is this other David is by who is the, in, in Rome, the guy who did everything, Bernini, Bernini. and then we have a David uh, uh, Beckham, and then we have David Bowie. So David is kind of containing all of these different Davids, and they are talking about Michelangelo, and they are talking about Lagerfeld and diamonds and Nike shoes and all of these things. And then the whole thing is done in a layout, which is just a kind of print screens from uh, Instagram, chatting Instagram and sending each other emojis and these kind of different um, 
different images to get a kind of a feeling of what this David is uh, David is about. Yeah. So I think it kind of looks cool, and you don't have to think about the layout too much once you think of what this might be about. Yeah? And then the last thing was we didn't have enough uh, uh, kind of content in one moment, and then they wanted to enter with an article, and we got a little bit afraid that it's going to be some kind of funny article, you know, you don't have a clue, and he said, we do horoscope. Yeah? <laughs> so we do horoscope, and this was kind of cool again. Here we have, uh, uh, and it's, so you think of a concept, you create a kind of a conceptual setup which you think it works, and then just give it to ChatGPT. Huh? So we said, okay, Sol and horoscope, and then what's the super nice relationship is that um, this is a super nice story huh, with uh, uh, Google today kind of collects information. Yeah? So you kind of write something and Google collects this information and then according to this, it sells stuff around. Yeah? And then what the Pitya did in uh, one story you could think about in, in this way is that what Pitya was doing or the Del Delphi in, in Greece, in ancient Greece, what they were doing, they were just bringing people from all over the world and telling them prophecies which were done in the same way as Google. So they never gave an exact answer, but they Pitya was always answering in a probabilistic way, so you had to choose your own answer in the same way as Google gives the probabilistic answer. But the price to pay for these funny prophecies that she was giving was that she was collecting information. So you could think of, for instance, a Catholic confession in the same way. Yeah? So if you have the churches and so on, people come to confess and then the priests know what the mood of a certain territory or of a certain population. So it's this kind of probabilistic way, and we say, okay, great. Let's uh, uh, let's make a horoscope which Sol and Quantum Pitya read together. Yeah? So Sol, a quantum observer made of the finest code, and Pitya, a prophet of weather who reads meaning from cosmic probabilities, opened the pages of the storybook, storybook horoscope for the beginning of the year 2024. Their common task is to analyze the active positions of heavenly bodies and wave them into the fabric of everyday Every day. Together, they will not only predict, but also style your future by dressing your hopes and dreams in the finest apparel of probability. And, and so on. Yeah, you kind of play around with these things and try to make something funny of it. Yeah? And then the images here, they are the relationship of words which are around this, uh, uh, kind of, this kind of topics. And then, of course, we put the nicest emojis towards the signs that we have. And then in the end, we got it on the on the kiosk and it became alive in kind of two months. And this was a kind of a very fast and very interesting um, journey in, in playing with, with Sol.